Throughout America's history, from 1703 to today, black soldiers have honorably answered the call to duty, serving with great valor and distinction in America's armed forces. In 1715, black slaves fought alongside their masters in South Carolina against Indians. They were promised freedom for fighting, but freedom never came. In the French and Indian Wars, the New England colonies could not recruit enough white men to fight, so they allowed black slaves to fight. During the American Revolutionary War, about 500,000 blacks served in their state militias against the British. As a result, northern states abolished slavery at the end of the war. Although the War of 1812 was mostly a naval war, about 10 to 20 percent of all naval crews were black. When the battle moved to land in the Battle of New Orleans, about 600 blacks helped give the British their worst defeat of the war. Just days after the South attacked Fort Sumter, South Carolina to start the Civil War, Northern blacks volunteered to fight. After President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, about 186,000 blacks filled the ranks of 16 black regiments. In 1866, the U.S. Senate determined it needed a regular army to fight the Indian. They established 67 regiments. Six of those regiments were black regiments, like the 9th and 10th Cavalry Regiments, better known as Buffalo Soldiers. Although it was just a 10-week war, all black units like the Buffalo Soldiers of the 9th and 10th Cavalry and the 24th and 25th Infantry Regiments fought in Cuba at the Battle of San Juan Hill. They rescued President Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. When World War I broke out, the U.S. sent 200,000 black soldiers in two all-black army divisions to fight the French. The 92nd and 93rd Divisions suffered about 5,000 casualties and 800 deaths. In all the wars through World War I, the army units were segregated by race. Attitudes about segregation began to change until the Army War College published their report. The report examined black soldier participation in previous wars to see if they could be integrated in future wars. These are some of the conclusions of the report. Compared to the white man, the black man is admittedly inferior mentality. The black man is inherently weak in character. The black man is by nature subservient and believes himself to be inferior to the white man. The black man cannot control himself in the fear of danger to the extent the white man can. The black has not the initiative and resourcefulness of the white man. The father, you take my rights away. Between 1876 and 1965, the Jim Crow laws mandated racial segregation in all public facilities in southern states from the former Confederacy, a separate but equal status for African Americans. The separation led to conditions for African Americans that tended to be inferior to those provided by white Americans. Something inside so strong I know that I can make it Though you're doing me wrong so wrong You thought that my pride Gone. Oh no, something inside so strong. Something inside so strong. The more you refuse to hear my voice, the louder I will sing. There's something inside. You hide behind walls of Jericho. 
When World War II broke out, the army was still segregated despite nearly one million black soldiers that served. However, World War II was going to serve as a turning point in American history where segregation would end and integration would begin. Shine so brightly, it will blind you. On January 16, 1941, the U.S. Army Department announced that black soldiers would be accepted into the Army Air Forces and trained as pilots at the Tuskegee Army Airfield. Beginning with the first class of 13 black students, 966 black pilots were trained at Tuskegee from 1940. 1941 to 1945. Most of them fought in World War II in North Africa and Europe. They completed over 15,000 missions, destroying over 260 enemy aircraft, sinking an enemy destroyer, and demolishing numerous installations. Some of them became known as Red Tails for the color of the rear tail of the P-51 airplane that they flew. In 1948, three years after World War II ended, President Truman signed Executive Order 9981, ending segregation in the armed forces. This allowed for black and white soldiers to serve in the same unit. The segregation had begun. Because there's, because there's something inside so strong I know that I can make it Though you're doing me wrong by the time the Korean War began in 1950, the Army issued Regulation 600-629-1, which established a policy of equality and treatment and opportunity for all people in the Army, regardless of race, color, religion. The Vietnam War was the first war that saw deployment of integrated units. White and blacks were fighting together as, as part of, of one unit. 12.6% of the fighting force were, was black. They accounted for 20% of those killed during the Vietnam War. By the time of the Gulf War in 1990, blacks made up about 22% of the army, which at the time was proportional to their percentage in the U.S. population. Finally, integration and diversity at a level that was representative of our society. There were prominent black leaders like General Colin Powell, U.S. retired, and many other black officers that led the war efforts. Just surveyed in the ladies, wanna take one home tonight. One that's feeling fine and looking real nice. We're not out here for a season, we're out here for a reason. To relate, have a ball. Come on. Today we continue to fight a war in Afghanistan. Blacks serve in the army at a higher rate than their representation in society. There were more black officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers in in the army more than any time in our history. Me and the fellas are hanging out tonight. Doing our best, it's up to your ladies to do the rest. You don't need to be a queen, no fashion model, baby, don't be so mean. <laughs> Get loose, baby, let's hang out. Get down without a doubt. We don't want you in your seats. Get up to dance. Get on your feet. There are approximately 1,358,000 soldiers in the total army. That includes active duty soldiers, reserves, and National Guard. Approximately 243,000 of those soldiers are black. That is roughly 18% of the total army. 3 million people in the U.S., 42 million are black. That is roughly 13% of the population. Thank you to Ski Gearman for your role in ending segregation and help bringing about integration that led to the diversity we have today. Oh yeah, I'm feeling the groove. Yeah, ain't nothing but a party tonight, y'all. Come on, join in. Yeah, tell them what I say, fellas. I